Right, well, let's uh, now talk indeed to the uh, Chief Executive of Advertech, Roy Douglas. Roy, welcome to the show. You were in not so long ago, a couple of weeks ago, I think, when you had the numbers out. And uh, you did point out to us that we had uh, an analyst on the other evening, some misconceptions about the model and so on. And we thought, seeing that education also is a hot topic, particularly at a time like this with the budget coming up, State of the Nation address, it's a crisis. We all know that generally in the company. So maybe just first correct what uh, you felt was a serious misconception in our discussion the other night. Thanks, David. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's quite a common misconception, actually. And it's something that we've actually seen discussed more and more in the media and the press. Uh, and this is the belief that the disruption caused through the Fees Must Fall campaign has created this opportunity for private universities. Now the truth is um, we, there are already a number of significant higher education institutions. The reality is they're offering uh, degrees, um, honors degrees, uh, master's programs uh, already that are the equivalent and are exactly the same as those offered by the public uh, institutions. The problem, of course, stems from the fact that the legislation prevents private providers from calling themselves universities. Yeah, it's a simple difference, but a very important one. But it makes a very different, a, a real difference to people and the misconception that, cons that comes out of that. So. Now, let's uh, perhaps clarify the mm. uh, Wits University, Cape Town and so on. They have individual faculties and qualifications. These are internationally accredited. Uh, are yours internationally accredited? I think that's an important point. It's not that they're internationally accredited. They are locally accredited according mm. to the Higher Education Act, mm. and they're recognized in SACRA, as are ours. In fact, there is a unitary accreditation and assurance system in South Africa. So our degree programs are submitted exactly the same as the public institutions. Whether your degree is recognized internationally is dependent on a lot of other factors, quite honestly. We are, in fact, recognized. We have the British Accreditation Council endorsement of our qualifications and of our, our sites of delivery. So we are internationally recognized, and our degrees are locally accredited and are the exact equivalent of the public institutions. And I think that's where the misconception mm. is, because people are not aware that that uh, is the case. And I suppose before I ask Bjorn to come in there, the, the, uh, when we hear news about the universities, the official universities are full. The impression is sometimes given by these reports that there's nowhere else for anyone to go. And in fact, there are a lot of places, and I think uh, one of the numbers I saw, um, you yourself have 16 educational brands, 90 college. There are 116 established private higher education providers. I don't, I don't think that's the message that gets across. It isn't commonly known amongst a, a number of people. Of course, we are quite effectively communicating to our target market, and that's the result of our very strong growth. Uh, in the last couple of years. Last year we grew our tertiary numbers in excess of 21%. Mm. So people in, in, in the sector understand where they can go for quality education uh, that lead to good employment opportunities. So we've seen good growth over the last few years. Uh, I do think that it's not a generally well-known story though. That's the problem that a lot of people misunderstand. Maybe these 116 providers must do a better job of telling people what to do. <coughs> Bjorn, uh, do you want to take it more broadly? Yeah, it's a sector that is showing strong growth and I suppose the question for an investor is how can this be sustained and the valuations of these companies? Well, I think the question for me is I think you know, Curra have done quite well to communicate the demand in the secondary space and saying that through LSM migration we are seeing you know, there are about two and a half million higher LSM students in need of a quality education in the primary and secondary space but I don't think it's well communicated as to how, what the demand is in the the tertiary space and maybe you could speak a little bit to the demand and, and, and how you're looking to penetrate that demand. Well, sure. As David points out, um, you know, the, the public institutions are pretty much full and cannot in fact accommodate the number of matriculants that are coming out these days, uh, which is significantly higher than it were and in the past. And many of them are more than capable of, oh, of cracking it, there's just no space. Absolutely. You know, they have to pass with a bachelor's pass at the matric before they can be considered for entrance into a degree program. And there are many of those students who are looking and seeking for places. So we are providing that, um, that opportunity, as are some of the others in, in the space already. Um, and we're seeing really good, strong demand. Um, we're very focused on providing a quality education. Uh, it has to be affordable. We are not state subsidized at all. So we have to recover the cost of tuition and, of course, a, a sustainable return for our business. Um, which does in some instances make us uh, a little more expensive but we've also done a lot of work at making it affordable and in fact now we are extremely competitive with the public so our Rosebank College offering which has degree programs and honours programs um, and is catering to that sector of the market and, and it becoming extremely popular we've seen very strong demand for, for that particular brand as well. Yeah. Am I right that you there are some areas where uh, the state uh, supported institutions because the, the universities are partly paid for by the state, partly by fees, partly by private sector money. 
medical schools, for example, the cost of setting up a medical school is not something that a private uh, sector supplier, I think, is at the point of uh, doing now. Well, again, legislation plays quite a big role in this area. Um, and not only do you have to comply with the Higher Education Act, but you'd also have to meet the certain medical board requirements and the likes as well. There's no doubt that uh, an investment to provide medical students, for and example. And I'm thinking of other faculties like engineering and so similar. Yeah, they are generally more. However, we are investigating those areas, and there's certainly some of those sectors that we could participate in and that we plan to participate in in the future. Mm. Um, technology plays a, quite a big role in lowering the cost of the mm. delivery of education into those areas. So it, it is something that we are exploring um, um, quite aggressively. Yeah. Bill? How do you monitor and ensure quality in, in terms of the uh, students that you enlist within the schools? I think? Do, do you look for university exemptions as a state-funded institution would do? Or is it more of um, you would accept or have various offerings across the board for students who finish, finish matric with, with different um, outcomes? Well, again, if uh, those students wish to embark upon degree programs, then they actually have to have a bachelor's pass at matric. That, again, is, is legislated and regulated. So the students we accept onto our degree programs are the equivalent. They have the pass rates of those that are attending the public institutions. What we do offer, of course, is a higher certificate for those who perhaps have not achieved a bachelor's pass. And that's a one-year program that, if they are successful at that level, then enables them to move on into a bachelor program. And that's a very successful offering that we have. So, for example, students will start with a higher certificate, and then if they complete that successfully, we'll move into our degree programs. It's a, it's a wonderful feeder yeah. scheme for us, too. Roy, let's look at the state of the nation tonight. Uh, you, obviously, being education being your business, you'll keep a close eye on it. Are you expecting anything to come out of this that would change things for you, for the sector? No, we're not expecting any change. Uh, quite clearly, it is a very topical and very important subject for the country as a whole. I think that government uh, and the private sector are working hard to try and find solutions to what is an enormously complex problem. We're not expecting that there'll be any significant change that would impact on us. I think what we really look forward to is to trying to participate and help to solve the crisis that the country faces. And that really should be through effective private and public partnerships. That's a good place to end. Uh, time to take a short break now. Market Report uh, back shortly. Thanks to Roy for coming into the studio. And we'll move on next to Bjorn's headline grabber in a moment.